Thank you, Jesus. Give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken, and great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Help me. You give life. You give life. You are love. You are love. You bring light. You bring light to the dark. You give hope. You give hope. And you restore. You restore every heart that every is broken. Heart that is broken. And great. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 
So we pour, so we pour our praise to you, holy, and we sing great. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Great are you, Lord. Someone say with me, great are you, Lord. Say great with meaning. Say great are you, Lord. The Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Thank you, praise and worship team. When we think about the goodness of the Lord, and when he didn't have to do what he did, but he did, he saved our souls, amen, and he's keeping us even as we're singing and praising him. Amen. As we're sitting, he's keeping us. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. He's a good God. He's a great God. He's an awesome God. He's our God. And he's personal to each and every one of us because he's done something different from all of us. But yet he is still God. How great are you, Lord. And so we praise him for his faithfulness, for his goodness, for his mercy. Amen. Thank you again. Praise and worship. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Friday night service. Amen. Glory to God. I know you all have worked today, some of you, and you're feeling a little tired, but when you get a praise on, when you begin to think about the goodness of the Lord, when you get to think about the goodness of the Lord and all that he's done, if you just think of one thing, you might not feel like praising him, but when, but when you think about just one thing, just one thing that he's done, and then you think about another thing. Then something else will come to you. The next thing you know, the sadness is gone. The irritation is gone. The sorrow is gone. You are praise and bless your God. Amen. God is great. Amen. Glory to God. On behalf of our pastors, Apostle Sammy Fatoki, and Apostle Marshall Fatoki, we want to welcome you on Friday night. Amen. Let's get our praise on. Glory to God. So we want to have, wonder if anyone have a testimony. For tonight, if you have a powerful, shaking, earth shaking testimony, stand on your feet. Amen. And come up. Anyone have a testimony about something? Amen. Bless the Lord. I, have, I was able to get a new car when I when I needed it at the last minute and I didn't know where it would come from and everything. And I was Plus, I was at the right place at the right time again. The second car dropped at the same time, and I was able to I was able to get it at an affordable price. God will do it, Amen. He did it, Amen. If He did it for Him, He'll do it for you too, Amen. Whatever need you have, God is able to supply that need because He is God, and there's none beside Him. Let's give God thanks for that testimony. Amen. Is there anyone else that have a testimony? 
Sister Gladys. December I will be gone I just don't know what I'm gonna do um, after the surgery I can start now um, and I read from Psalm 23 to all the way until uh, August 2023 uh-huh and so they had to put um, the doctor the guy know had to put me on um, two very powerful um, what are they called hormones birth control pills to stop the bleeding and it took forever. Um, but finally it stopped in August. But the testimony is that, um, you were saying something earlier, how we're not grateful and thankful for the things that God does. But in the midst of being on those birth controls, I ended up gaining 40 pounds in less than half, like about half a year. Um, and instead of saying thank you to God for taking me through the surgery and keeping me healthy and alive, I was just complaining <laughs> about the weight gain and then finally, the other day, I was like, wow, I'm not grateful for the things that God does, you know? Yes. No, really, because I remember the song from way when I was a kid, you know, count your blessings, count your blessings, name them one by one, yes. count your blessings, see what God has done, yes. count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will remind you what the Lord has done. You know, I mean, really, I just, it floored me that I was obsessed with the weight when he kept me alive, you know. I was like, thank you, God, you know. Um, but the other one is, um, so last year, I had to get my car worked on, and um, in the dealership, the, there were two dealerships that had to converge because one of the dealerships was being built. Um, and the dealer that was being built was um, a Mitsubishi. So they had all their models sitting in the Nissan um, dealership. So when I was getting my car worked on, of course, you go look at the cute new cars, you know. And I was like, God, I want that car right there. You know, fast forward a year later in January, I had an accident where I hit a deer. Um, and I remember even when I hit the deer, I said, you know what? God's going to give me something really nice and really good, you know. Um, well, God gave me the car I saw inside the dealership. Um, today. So I bought the car today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but even when I was there, before I even went there, so I had seen a really good deal um, online because they all have really the same deal. Um, but there was one that was really good online all the way in Texas. So I called the guy in Texas and, oh yeah, we'll give you the deal. I qualified for the loan. That's the other thing I want to say thank you to God because even my, um, I was working on my credit because my credit was really good. In, during the pandemic, and then I refinanced my house, and my credit just tanked. Um, and then a few other things happened, and then my credit tanked even more. So like, the past two years, I was like, Lord, what's going on? But finally, in the last, I want to say six months, my credit jumped all the way back up. And I'm like, thank you, God. Um, so when I called them, um, so the deal that they were having online for all the Mitsubishi dealers was 0% um, interest, which is unheard of. So that means I pay no interest but what the car is worth or cost. Um, and then it was um, no, no money down. Then they also had the thing was um, the first three months, you don't have to pay until, so I have to, don't have to pay my first three months. Yeah. So when I called them, um, they were like, yeah, you can qualify for this. I qualified for it. But then it's all the way in Texas. And then the guy ended up like trying to cheat me. You know, he was like, instead of giving, they were supposed to give you 44,000, no, yeah, $4,500 back. Um, no, $4,000 back. And then he decided he was going to just put it into the loan. And I said, but it said no money down. And I said, you know what? Forget it because you already started, you already are trying to cheat me. So I went back to the drawing board and I called around the stores that are around, or the dealers are around here. Um, and I finally got in touch with one guy all the way up in Frederick. And um, they said, you know what? will give you the deal that they were going to give you there. But then he said, I'm only going to give you $3,000. I was like, oh, 3500 I said, that's fine. That's still a huge amount of money. And then, um, then he sent somebody to come pick me up because I didn't have a car to get up there. He sent somebody almost an hour out to come pick me up this morning. And when I got there, he said, I'm going to give you the 4000 So he gave me 4000 off the car. And I just want to say thank you to God again. Um, unbelievable, unbelievable. Um, but the third testimony was something Pastor Marcia said a few weeks ago about her mom. Even though they're going through the trials right now with what's going on with her mom and that horrible housemate that's there, um, 
she's praising God in advance because she knows that God is going to deliver that situation and work it out. So I'm going to thank God in advance because there's something I've been trusting God for or somebody I've been trusting God for. And I know that God's going to deliver her at the right appointed time. So I'm going to praise you in advance, God, because it burns in my heart every day. She burns in my heart every day. I want her to be saved. I want my sister to be saved. So I'm going to trust you in advance, God, that you're going to save her. You're going to save her because she knows the word. She grew up Christian, but, you know, this world is making her think different. But I know the God that I serve, that he's going to save her. So I'm going to trust you, God, in advance that you're going to save her because she grew up on the world. She grew up on the world. No matter what America says, God's going to save my sister. Thank you, God. Amen. 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 Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings and see what God has done. And Sister Gladys, just because we don't see what God is doing, when we pray, we trust that he's already done it. And then we begin to pray some more. An enemy comes in to make us think that it's not so. When we come in sincerity to the Father God and pray, he, he desires that all souls will be saved. Because he died for the souls. And sometimes we look to see a glimpse of something. And sometimes we don't see anything. But to know that God is working on behalf of your heart. Because you prayed to God. And you've been faithful to the Lord. So the Lord will bless. He will do it. He will do it. Let's give God thanks. Amen. <laughs> Delayed blessings. She had a couple of blessings there. Testimonies. Amen. Anyone have another testimony? Lady Kavan. Amen. <laughs> so last week. At the end of service, I don't know if you all remember, Pastor Sam just said, somebody is getting ready to get a job that they didn't even ask for. I heard him. Right? Y'all heard him, I right? Heard him. I was back there grinning, just cheesing from ear to ear because I had just gotten a call on Thursday, a text from a girlfriend who uh, works on Aberdeen Proving Ground and asked me if I wanted, if I was interested in this accounting position. So I told her, sure, yeah, I'm sending the information. I didn't ask, Okay. So that Friday, Friday morning, Friday night, we were here, but Friday morning, she texted me and was like, hey, did you fill out the application? Did you send in your resume? I was like, no, I haven't done it yet. But she said, send me your resume right now. The guy wants it right now. And go ahead and fill out the application online. So I did. So when we came here Friday night, I was laughing because the amount that they were offering for the, saying that they were going to give me for the position, if I got, I hadn't even gotten an interview, was double what I'm making now. And that's what he said, right? Not, I'm not talking double hourly. I'm talking double yearly. Okay, double Glory. yearly, right? So I just sat back there and I was grinning. I was like, okay, maybe he's talking to me. And he was telling everybody to come up and get, and get prayer. And I was like, okay, I'm standing back there like, maybe I'll just stay back here. But then he said, I'm going to anoint everybody's hands. I want to anoint your hands. So I was like, let me get in this line and stop playing, right? So I got, <laughs> I remember just before he got ready to know my hands, he said, let me, let, let me get Lady Corinne. So I was like, okay, I'm going. And I just said, God, whatever, because I didn't ask for it. But the week before that, I had prayed on my way to work because I have a very long commute for work. And I had said, Lord, things were kind of going crazy at work. And I was like, Lord, if this is not where you want me to be anymore, you know, I'm, I'm game for whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do, I'm up for it. So just, And that was my prayer, and I just left it at that. I just said, but I'm really not liking this commute anymore. So I left it at that, got the text Thursday, sent my resume in Friday. Had an interview Friday night. They they interviewed me that night via phone. And then on Monday, which was this past Monday, they called and said, we want to interview you for the position um, after the phone interview. So to make a long story short, my interview was today at 2.30. And it was for an hour. And at 3.50, they called and offered me the position. Amen. <laughs> to God. So, and it's Amen. double what I'm asking. So I'm like, every Amen. little thing that you said, double what I'm making now. So everything that you said, Pastor Sam, I was like, okay, well, the one thing he said that I haven't heard yet is that there, I accepted the offer that they gave me, but I said, but I'm believing that they're going to come back with something more. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> because that's the Claim last it. piece. That's the missing piece. But yeah. I just bless God Claim for that because he gave it, me the Amen. job. I accepted the job today. I start June 3rd. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Yes. We don't have Amen. Time. Amen. Whoa. We thank God praise for all the, the testimony. Praise the Lord. That's it be the name of the Lord. Wow. Last week it happened for somebody else. Yeah. Amen. I told him it's going to be more. When they send the offer, actually it was more. 
Amen. Come on, can we bless God for what the Lord is doing? Glory to God. Glory to God. I greet you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Also, we have a first time guest. First time? Amen. Can you stand and just tell us your name and who invited you? We want to welcome you to this house. Huh? Oh, Sister De Costa, Shireen De Costa. Amen. Your name, sir? Huh? Ions, okay? Okay, hello. Amen. Come on, let's give them a warm welcome. Let's give them a warm welcome. I really bless God for what the Lord is doing. As a matter of fact, Shireen, something is coming for you as well. We were praying this week, uh, in the week, about two days, one day, some prayer team praying, and your name came out twice, that something is coming for you. If I were you, I'll be praising God and thank God for what God has on the way for you, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. I, I want to teach a little different message today, because this weekend... Is a um, Pentecost weekend. How many know that? Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. Amen? So I'm going to be teaching today about the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? I truly believe a lot of believers don't know who Holy Spirit is truly is. Honest. I, I, I don't believe so. So I'm going to be teaching there today. I truly believe you will be blessed to know who the Holy Spirit is. Revelation of the Holy Spirit. Let's go to John 7. Who is the Holy Spirit? Revelation 7. So we all know that here I've taught this many times. Pentecost, Acts 2. One to four. That was not the first Pentecost. We know that, right? Do we know that? Acts chapter two. Who say yes? Acts chapter two. It's not the first Pentecost. Do you know that? The first Pentecost actually happened in the book of Exodus. After the children of Israel left Egypt. By the time they left Egypt and they got to Mount Sinai, it was 50 days. It was 50 days. It's not the first. In Acts chapter 2, it was the first after Jesus passed over. Pentecost is always 50 days after Passover. Amen? You should know that, especially in this ministry, God, Holy Spirit move a lot here. So we should know that. Amen? So the force was Exodus when the glory of the Lord came upon the mountain. Okay? And the, the Bible says they couldn't stand before the law. That was the first Pentecost, 50 days. Pentecost means what? 50. When you count from Passover, crucifixion, to tomorrow is 49 days plus one, 50, Sunday. That's how it's count. Amen? Good. Let's go to John 7, 37, 38, and 39. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this, please pay attention to this. He said, but this is spoke 
concerning the spirit. But this is spoke concerning the what? The spirit. Now, let me just stop there. The difference between the first Pentecost and Acts chapter 2 was that the first one, Holy Spirit came on the mountain. After God was doing what he has to do, Holy Spirit what? He left. The difference in Acts chapter 2, Holy Spirit came and Holy Spirit stopped. He stayed there. He never went back. Actually, Pentecost is also church birthday. That was established. During Pentecost, something great always happened. Amen. The Holy Spirit came and dwelt in the heart of man. He stayed in our heart. Glory to God. And that's what Jesus was saying here. Jesus was promising the coming of the Holy Spirit. He said, but this is spoke concerning the Spirit. Whom those believing in him will receive. Amen. Those in the world do not have Holy Spirit. You have to be saved. Believe that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Then the Holy Spirit will come in your heart and the Holy Spirit will stay in your heart. Are you with me? He said, the said but this is Paul concerning the Spirit. Whom those believing in him will receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given. Why? Because Jesus was not yet glorified. Jesus yet glorified, so the Holy Spirit cannot be given. Jesus had to go. Then the Holy Spirit had to be released. Amen? Well, it had to be 50. Pentecost. Pentecost. Now, let's go to Acts. Acts chapter 2. Where we also, where we had the manifestation, the promise of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. I'm going to be talking about that also next uh, Sunday. It said, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. You can see that expectant. They were waiting for the Holy Spirit. They knew that the Holy Spirit was coming. Because it's 50 days after Passover. And one occurred. They were expecting. They were waiting from the gift of the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus promised them. Amen. He promised us that the Holy Spirit will come. He said, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven. As of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. And one sat upon each other. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. You see the different difference in Exodus? They were not filled. In Acts chapter 2, they were what? Filled. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them what? All around. You will see speaking in tongue is not something that we make up. Speaking in tongue, the Holy Spirit gives you utterance. The Holy Spirit possesses your vocal cord and the Holy Spirit begin to speak to you. Now, I want to focus today for those that didn't really know the Holy Spirit, who is the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? I mean, this might be, some of us, it might be a new revelation to know who the Holy Spirit is truly is. Because if you don't truly know who the Holy Spirit is, how can you receive the full manifestation of the Holy Spirit? Amen. Who is the Holy Spirit? Well, before I tell you who is the Holy Spirit, I will tell you what the Holy Spirit is not. Holy Spirit is not a wind. Even though the Bible says, you know, like a rushing mighty wind. Holy Spirit is not a wind. But when it's present, it moves things better than the wind. Holy Spirit is not fire. Amen? Holy Spirit is not fire. 
but when it's present, it purifies more than fire. Are you hearing me? It purifies more than fire. Holy Spirit is not water. Those that are in prophetic, sometimes God will give you water to show that the presence of God. But that doesn't mean the Holy Spirit is water. Amen? Because dreams is symbolic and what? And reality. It's just sim symbols of the Holy Spirit. Are you hearing me? Is somebody here hearing me? So Holy Spirit is not fire, but it purifies more than fire. Holy Spirit is not water. Even cleanse better than water. Holy Spirit is no wind, but when it's present, it moves things. Even it will move you out of the way. Amen, somebody. Amen. Holy Spirit is to us. Oh, please pay attention. I want you to get the revelation of the Holy Spirit. When you get that, your life will change. Holy Spirit is to us. What Jesus was to the disciples. Holy Spirit is to us what Jesus was to the disciples. When Jesus was the, with the disciples, he comforted them. He instructed them. He led them. He guided them. He empowered them. And he did more for them. So the Holy Spirit is like that to us. Hallelujah. Having the Holy Spirit is as good as having Jesus. Because it is to us what the Jesus was to the disciples. Holy Spirit is God with us. Amen. I know the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, it means what? God with us. Holy Spirit is what? God with us. Holy Spirit is God to us. Hello? I know we haven't had like that before. Holy Spirit is God with us. Amen? Holy Spirit is the continuation of God on earth today. The extension of God. The continuation of God on earth today. Holy Spirit is the administrator of the glory of God. Administrator of the glory of God. Holy Spirit is the third person of Trinity. Holy Spirit is the third person of Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the what? The Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit is God. Jesus is God. The Father is God. Three in one. The same way with you. Trion, man. We are trion. Can I hear amen? We are trion. The soul, spirit, and body. Trion. God is what? Trion. Amen. So Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. When we talk about Trinity, they, 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 they call their name in the hierarchy. Number one is God the Father. Number two is God the Son. Number three is God the what? The Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit is God. Holy Spirit is the extension of God on earth. Holy Spirit is the continuation of God on earth. Holy Spirit is God with us. Holy Spirit is our counselor. Hallelujah. You have a counselor. Glory to God to cancel you. Holy Spirit is our counselor. The same way Jesus was a counselor to the disciples. Jesus was the advisor to the disciples. 
Holy Spirit is the same thing to us, our counselor. Holy Spirit is the witness of Jesus. The witness of Jesus. Holy Spirit is the one that was there in the beginning of Jesus' life. To the end of Jesus' life. Holy Spirit. Nobody was there that knew everything about Jesus. The only person that knew everything about Jesus is the Holy Spirit. Even his parents did not know. Because there's one time Jesus disappeared for three days. Who would know that story in the Bible? At the age of 12, he disappeared. His parents don't even know where he was. They didn't know they were looking for him. But the Holy Spirit was there. Holy Spirit led him there. Holy Spirit was with him. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit witnessed the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Even when they put him in the tomb, nobody was there. But the Holy Spirit was there. Holy Spirit knows everything. Even when we, as I begin to teach this, I'm going to turn this to a series for weeks and weeks and weeks to truly know who the Holy Spirit is in. Even Jesus said, he said, the Holy Spirit, he will take what is of mine and reveal to you. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit is God. Holy Spirit is our counselor. Holy Spirit is the administrator of the glory of God. He administered the glory of God. Holy Spirit is God with us. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit is the revealer. Holy Spirit. Oh, I pray that you will get more revelation of who the Holy Spirit is. Are you hearing me? The witness of Jesus. Holy Spirit is the visible Evidence of the presence of God. Visible evidence. Who is the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit is God. Amen. Thank you for one amen. Church, Holy Spirit is God. Holy Spirit is God. Holy Spirit is the third member of Trinity. There's God the Father, there's God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But these three are one. This three is one. So Holy Spirit is God. Holy Spirit is the third member of the Godhead. And he is co-equal with God the Father and God the Son. Thank you for three. Amen. Holy Spirit. Is co equal. You know what I mean by that? Co equal with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy. Amen. The Bible calls him God. Thank you for that one. Amen, too. Thank you, brother. It was soft, but I heard it. The Bible, I will show you scripture. Because teaching like this, you have to go step by step, scripture upon scripture, precept upon precept, to truly understand and have the revelation of the Holy Spirit. When you have the revelation of the Holy Spirit, some of the struggle that we are going through, you won't go through no more. You talk to Holy Spirit. I talk to Holy Spirit. I get an advice for Holy Spirit. I get direction from the Holy Spirit. I'm empowered by the Holy Spirit. He's our comforter. He's there with us. But I can't preach today. I have to teach and take it step by step. Is that all right? The Bible calls him God. Let's go to Acts chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. It's a scripture that you know, but probably you, just, you overlooked it. When I read the scripture, I take my time. But Peter said to Ananias, 
Why has Satan filled your heart and lied to the Holy Spirit? You know the story? Yes. And lied to who? Lied to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself. Why it remained? Was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived these things in your heart? You have not lied to man. You have lied to who? You have lied to who? In the beginning, when you read it, the first thing is said that he lied to who? Holy Spirit. He lied to the Holy Spirit. He lied to God. You lied to God. You lied to the Holy Spirit. They are one. Holy Spirit is God. The apostle addresses you lie to the Holy Spirit. You will see how he interchanged. Do you see that? I know I would like to have it on the screen. I don't think they're teaching it there. The apostle did what? Interchange. You lie to who first? Holy Spirit. And at the end, he said, well, you lied to God. You did not lie to man. You have lied to who? To God. So Holy Spirit is what? Come on, loud and clear now. Come on, loud and clear now. Holy Spirit is God. He posi- I will give you proof. Don't worry. We have a case here I'm presenting for you today. Amen? He possesses the characteristics that make God to be God. Holy Spirit possesses the characteristics that God alone has such as eternal nature. And you know God is God? You know God is God by his what? Nature. Let me give you. He possesses Holy Spirit. All the nature of God. Let's go to Hebrews 9.14. The nature of God. Holy Spirit has it. He possesses the characteristics of God alone. What God alone possesses. Such as eternal nature. Even the devil does not possess those characteristics. No. Are we there? Hebrews 9, 14. He said, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God cleansing your conscience from dead work to serve the living God. You will see the word eternal spirit. Now, let's talk a little bit about the nature of God. When I say the nature of God, I mean what made God to be God. Nobody else has that nature. Number one, omnipresence. Holy Spirit is omnipresent. What do I mean by that? Holy Spirit is everywhere. The devil is not everywhere. Demons are not everywhere. But Holy Spirit is everywhere. Oh, omnipresent. The only person that has that nature is God. God is everywhere. Hello? God is everywhere. God is in your house. God is right here. Amen. He's everywhere. But he does not manifest everywhere. But God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. The devil is not everywhere. God is in heaven. God is in second heaven. The first heaven. The third heaven. God is right here. God is in my home. God is in your home. God is everywhere. Omnipresent. So the Holy Spirit is what? Omnipresent. 
That's why Jesus told the disciple, it is good for me to go. Remember? We will get there. He said, it is good for me to go. The disciples don't want him to go. He said, no, it is good. Because Jesus, when he was living on the face of the earth, Jesus was not omnipresent. No, he was not. Hello? He was not. He can only be at one place at one time. He can be everywhere. Why? He's trapped in this body. He's trapped. He's limited in this body. It is better for me to go and let the Holy Spirit come because the Holy Spirit is everywhere. Jesus was not everywhere because he came in the form of man. He took off his glory, the garment of glory, the garment of deity. He left it in heaven and he came unto us. When you go to Philippians, you will see the, the Bible talks about that. He stripped himself of the glory. And he came and lived as man. And when I talk about that, I get excited. So that tells me Jesus did not defeat the devil with the glory. No, he did not. He defeated the devil by the anointing. That's why he said, if you believe the work that I do, you will do the same, even greater. Hallelujah. He didn't use the glory. Amen. He left that in heaven. Glory is the atmosphere of heaven. He left it there. He came as a man. That's why I told the disciple, it's good for me to go. And the Father who sent who? Holy Spirit can be anywhere, everywhere. Holy Spirit is omnipresent. That's the nature of God. Nobody else is omnipresent. That's the divine nature of God. It's everywhere. He knows everything. Let, let me take it one by one. Is that okay? I should not rush. So I can give you scripture to back it up. Let's go to Psalms. Pages. Okay, I got it. All right. So, Holy Spirit is omnipresent. Means, Holy Spirit is everywhere. The Holy Spirit is God. Amen? The extension of God on earth. One second. Okay, man, why, why this is loading? Use the phone. Okay. I'm about to lay hands on this iPad. Amen. Holy Spirit is omnipresent. Come on, let's go to Psalm 139. Psalms 139, 7 to 10. Let me see what I just read. The apostle interchanged the Holy Spirit and God. Ananias has lied to who? To the Holy Spirit. Then at the end, he said, you, you didn't lie to man, you lied to who? God. To tell us the Holy Spirit is God. God is what? The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the extension or the continuation of God on earth. Holy Spirit is God with us. Holy Spirit is to us what Jesus was to the disciples. Holy Spirit is not the wind. Holy Spirit is not a fire. Amen? Holy Spirit is not water. Amen? But it cleanses better than water. Holy Spirit is not fire. But it purifies more than fire. Holy Spirit is not wind. But when it's present, it moves things. It can move these speakers. It can move this keyboard. Even if the person that's playing the keyboard and moves them together. 
when the Holy Spirit come down, he can send you over there and send you back here. He moves things. Glory to God. Holy Spirit is not electricity. But when he come upon you, you think you are electrical tent. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. Oh, let us experience you today, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit begin to move even today. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit is the administrator of the glory of God. He administers the glory of God. Come on, let's go there quick. Who is there? Hebrews 9.14. So, sorry, 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 sorry. Psalm 139. 7. Pay attention. This is David talking to God. Right? He said, where can I go from your spirit? See that word spirit? Is that? S is what? Capital. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? Verse 8. He said, if I ascended into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, In hell, you are there. Hell, who have she hold? Hell, under the earth. Hell, his spirit is there. David started by using the word spirit of God. Because Holy Spirit is who? God. He said, you are there. If I make my bed, I don't know if they use bed in hell, but uh, <laughs> I know what I know about hell is torment. What I know about hell is pain. What I know about hell is not fun. It's fire, right? Well, it's no time for fire yet. Hell is a waiting place for the day of judgment. Amen? So David said, even if I go there and spread my bed, your spirit is there. Behold, you are there. Go to verse 9. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the autumnal path of the sea, in the ocean, in the corner at the bottom of the sea, he said, you are there. In other words, David had better understanding of the Spirit of God. He know who God is. And he know that God is omnipresent. On the uttermost part of the sea is there. In hell is there. In heaven is there. Omnipresent. Can we say omnipresent? Can we say omnipresent? Holy Spirit is omnipresent. That means Holy Spirit is God. I know maybe you might not see Holy Spirit as God. Yes, He is God. It's the extension of God on earth, or the continuation of God on earth. So, Holy Spirit is omnipresent. Also, Holy Spirit. Is omniscient. Omnipresent means it's everywhere. Holy Spirit is where? Everywhere. Omniscient is, is O M N I C I E N T. Omniscient. Holy Spirit is omniscient. Let's go quick to First Corinthians. We have established that the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. Correct? That is the nature that is only used for God. That nature never can be used for a man. You are not everywhere. Amen. Right now you are here. 
they are not in your house. If you don't even know what's going on in your house. But I know what is going on in my house. All I need to do to talk to my counselor, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit reveals. He can tell me. He can even show me with that camera. Amen. Are you hearing me? All right. And say omniscient, omniscient. Let's go to Corinthians 2, 10, and 11. First Corinthians 10 and 11. I'm taking my time today. I have to establish this. The Holy Spirit is God. He possesses the nature of God. It's omnipresent. Even the devil is not omnipresent. No, it's not. It's not. Even the angels are not. The angels of God. But God sent them on assignment. Holy Spirit is not the messenger of God. Some people think the Holy Spirit is a messenger of God. No. Holy Spirit is God. Jesus is God. And God the Father is God. One. Monotism. Not tritism. One God. Trinity. We also were created like that. Trion man. Spirit. Soul. Body. That's how he created us. Because we have his image. Some of the characteristics of God. We have some of it. Not all. Amen? Can you say omniscient? Come on, let's read 1 Corinthians 2, 10 and 11. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. For what a man knows the things of a man except the spirit of a man which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God. No one except the spirit. Only spirit is unknowing. Omniscient God. He knows everything. He knows what's going to happen tomorrow. He knows the things of God. He revealed the things of God to us. It's unknowing. The devil is not unknowing. Principalities are not unknowing. Demons are not unknowing. But the Holy Spirit is God. He knows everything. He knows that you're going to be here today. He knows where you're going to be tomorrow. He knows when that breakthrough is coming. He knows. He's the spirit of God. He searches all things. That's the mind of God. And that's what Jesus said. That Holy Spirit, when he come, he will take some of mine and reveal to you some things that belong to him. He knows everything about Jesus. He knows when Jesus was born until crucifixion and resurrection. Even when Jesus was in the tomb, he was there. When all the disciples were gone. Are you hearing me? Omniscient. Meet unknowing. Amen. Another nature of God is omnipotent. Omnipotent. Holy Spirit is omnipotent. Amen. Number one. Omnipresent. Holy Spirit is everywhere. Omniscient. He knows everything. 
He knows the mind of God. Hallelujah. That's why when I pray, especially when I'm praying warfare, I only pray with understanding just for a few minutes. And then I begin to pray with what? Pray what? If you don't pray in the spirit, I pray this weekend you'll be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Because when you begin to pray in the spirit, the enemy is confused. You don't have the understanding of what you are saying. Because you're, how many hands? How many of you have prayer language? One is to speak in the spirit. I'm not asking you if you pray in the, speak in the spirit. How many, how many speak in the spirit? Speak in tongue. Good. Put your hand up. How many have prayer language? Oh, I need to pray for you. I need to pray for you. Maybe I should hold on to that. Some of us are not ready for that. Most of the intercessors, they have prayer language. How many have that? I know Pastor Masha, yeah, Jason, Stephanie, all of them have that. Oh, yeah. Prayer language. When you are speaking in the spirit and praying in the spirit, You can be speaking in the spirit and actually giving revelation. Two ways. David said, no, Paul, if I speak in tongue, I speak the tongue of men and the tongue of angel. Sometimes when you speak in tongue, you speak languages on tongue. And then when you speak the tongue of angels, it's a language they don't speak on earth. So prayer language is actually different for, it's a dispenser of gifts. Holy Spirit is the one that does that. Are you hearing me? Somebody going to get a new prayer language today. And somebody's heart is going to be open. And you begin to see vision. <laughs> in Jesus' name. I say in Jesus' name. I say in Jesus' name. It shall be so in Jesus' name. It's the Holy Spirit. If you do even know, let me go a little deeper. Holy Spirit is part of salvation. Holy Spirit is the one that convicts. Yes. When I'm preaching the word, when the word is being preached, it's the Holy Spirit that convicts. It's the Holy Spirit that combats. It's the Holy Spirit that also corrects. Father, we thank you. Now, omnipotent. What is omnipotent? All powerful. Let's go to Luke 137. How are we doing this time? Holy Spirit is omnipotent. You see, and the angel answered and said to her, that's to Mary, the mother of Jesus, and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. The power. Without the Holy Spirit, there is no power of God. Actually, power of God is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Acts 1.8, you shall receive. You shall receive. When? After the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And that's why the angel was telling Mary here, how can a virgin conceive? It's impossible. It's impossible. 
So the angel of the Lord was telling her, what will happen first, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit will come upon you and then what? The power. And the power of the highest will overshadow you. Glory to God. The moment the Holy Spirit come upon you, you are in the presence of God. Ah, Father, I thank you. The moment the Holy Spirit come upon you, guess what? You are in the presence of God. You are untouchable. Enemy cannot do anything to you. You are covered. That's what happened to Samson. Remember the story of Samson? When the glory was there, he cannot die. He will die, but the Colosseum will not kill him. <laughs> Power was still there. Hello? Do you know the difference between the Holy Spirit or the glory and power? It's two different things. It's two different things. Glory is different from power. Or Holy Spirit is different. Holy Spirit, glory is the same thing. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot receive power. Amen. Glory, Holy Spirit, protect you. You will see something. Power was still there, but the Spirit was no longer there. No. It was not there. If the glory was there, I mean, what, let us study the power. How he pulled the pillars. That was not human power. Was it? No. Can be. He pulled the Colosseum. Power was still there. But the present was gone. If the present was there, he would not die. The presence of God protect. The presence of God is like a shield around us. You can point a gun at me and shoot if the glory is there, it will not get to me. A lot of people don't believe that. It will not get. He protect. He pull it. Collagen came down and he died. Why? The presence is not there. But the power was there. Let me give you another, another example. You know the story of Elisha. When Elisha died, what happened? They buried him. You guys remember? They buried him. Guess what happened? There was a man body that, that was beside him. Guess what happened? It came back to life. It came back to life. What healed the man? Come and talk to me. It's Bible study. No, not the present. I know you say present. Not the present. Not the glory. No! The moment someone dies, the present is gone. Is the anointing? No! You got to learn, you got to know these things. Is the anointing? You know the word anointing? You know what it means? To smear. Right? The Greek word is what? Smear. What is smear? Uh huh. So the what? It's like having lotion. And lotion in your hand. Guess what happened? Come on, you don't show your body now. Come on, talk to me, child. <laughs> to me. What happened? When you get the lotion, I keep on rubbing here. Eh? It go where? It penetrates into your body. Anointing is like that. 
So the moment he died, guess what? The presence of God is gone. Immediately. But what? The anointing was still there. Are you, you understand this? Let me trying to slow down. Hello? We are doing Bible study. We have to know the Holy Spirit. Especially a church like this, there's healing, there's deliverance, you know, doing preaching, people getting delivered, people getting healed, you know. Who's doing that? It's the Holy Spirit. Amen. I went to a church in Uganda to preach. The pastor, I never preached there, they don't know me. He just tell me to come preach. I get there, I begin to preach on a Sunday morning. People dress nice and everything. You guess what happened? Deliverance started. People are falling under the anointing, vomiting, coughing. It's the Holy Spirit. Are you hear what I'm saying? I went to another country. It was Cameroon. Dr. Shu, I was staying with Dr. Shu that time I went. I went to a church Sunday morning. I went for a business trip, actually. And the man, after, a, was a pastor. After we finished, he said, man of God, I want to come preach. In my church, I went there, I began to preach. Holy Spirit came down, deliverance started in the church. I get the point, actually, I felt bad. I said, you know, they put the night on the church fire. I'm serious. He's the Holy Spirit. Amen. When he comes, his power begins to manifest. There's one thing that I want to give you. I want you, you want to understand this. Do you see that? Holy Spirit is what? Omnipotent. Can we say that? Holy Spirit is associated with the Father, Son, on an equal status. On an equal status. He is associated with the Father, with the Son, on equal status. Matthew 28, 19. He said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of what? The Father, the what? The Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. You will see when Jesus baptized, guess what happened? We experienced the three manifestations. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father spoke. What did he say? This is my beloved Son. In womb. I am well pleased. Jesus executed what? Baptism. And then what happened? Come and talk to me. Come and talk to me. But mind you, Holy Spirit is not a dove. <laughs> Holy Spirit is not a what? Dove. They had to fly from destiny, um, origin to destination. A bird has to move from one place to what? To another. But the Holy Spirit is already here. You don't need to fly from heaven and fly into everlasting life with the Satan. No. It's already here. To be. It's already here. It's not the dove. Amen? But you can fly. But you don't need to fly to go to Australia. It's already there. You don't need to fly to go to Cameroon or Sierra Leone. It's already there. You don't need to fly to go to, you know, I'm coming to you. To go to Jamaica. It's already there. Remember, Holy Spirit is omniwal present. It's there. It's in your house. It's everywhere. Amen. Holy Spirit is my GPS. He gave me direction. Where to go? I'm serious. Sometimes I don't know what to do. I say, God, which way? Go right or go left? I want to make decisions. I'm serious. I talk to, I use the Holy Spirit. I talk to the Holy Spirit. I consult the Holy Spirit. 
but the Holy Spirit will not give you an answer to an doing the exam. That's cheating. A or B, true or false, Holy Spirit will not do that. Amen. Can we say amen? Holy Spirit will not cheat. Amen. Study to show yourself. Amen. Oh, God, I like this. You know what the Holy Spirit will do? After you have studied, oh, into your reservoir and bring it up and show it to you. Amen. After you have studied and studied and studied. Amen. So Holy Spirit is associated with the Father and Son on equal status. We see that in baptism. God spoke. Jesus executed baptism. Holy Spirit did what? Do you see how the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit work together? There's no division. It's one. It's one. Just like your body, soul, and spirit. That's you. But they have their own functions. They have their own what? Function. One of these days I will teach a message in the beginning. And the duty of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Even you will see it in creation. The Father always what? Execute. No, the Son executes. The Father initiate. The Father initiate. Let us create man in our own image. Who spoke? Father. The Son execute. Even Paul told us in Colossia that everything was created by Jesus. Without him, nothing was created. Yes. But the Holy Spirit, seal it. Holy Spirit, do it. The word was spoken and the Holy Spirit began to form everything. Even when you go to if you go to Genesis Genesis 1 2. It said the Spirit of the Lord was what? Uh huh. Is what? Waiting for what? He was waiting for instruction. He never moved without the Father's instruction. Even Jesus do not do nothing with, unless the Father speaks. The Father initiates, the Son executes, and the Holy Spirit sells it. It is a done deal. Amen. That's why when the Father sent Jesus to come on the earth, do you know his own conditional covenant? Not conditional. It was already done in heaven. Are you with me, church? In heaven, it was already done. Jesus' coming was already done. That's why the Bible says, before the foundation of the war, he was slain. You know what that means? It was a done deal. Jesus already saying, I am going. Father, sending Jesus, the Spirit, his agreement with the Father and with the Son. It was already done. Are you with me? Holy Spirit. Even the Holy Spirit is essential, active in God's plan of redemption. He was active. He was what? Active in salvation. In redemption. Holy Spirit was active. Can I give you scripture? What's my time? Okay, I need to. Do I need to stop? Go to John sixteen eight. Mm. 
Let's do it quick. I will read it because of time. John 16, 8, you know what it said? He said, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin. Convict the world of sin. And of righteousness. And of judgment. Who convict? Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot be saved. Holy Spirit is the one that convict. That's what the Bible says. We should not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Remember Jesus also said something that if you blaspheme against what? Do you know what? The Holy Spirit is the one that saved you. Holy Spirit is the one that convicts you of sin. If there's no conviction, there's no transformation. If there's no conviction, there's no conviction. No! He's the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus said, if you, bla- you can blaspheme against the Father. You can blaspheme against the Son. But if you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, He's the one that convicts you. He's the one. It's the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's the Holy Spirit. That's why we don't blaspheme. Even we don't blaspheme against the Father or the Son. How much more the Holy Spirit? He's the one that convicts. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God. He convicts. Not Jesus. Jesus paid the price. But the Spirit convicts. That's how they work in unison. They work together. Everybody have their own role. God is so structural, you know. Amen. Have you seen the Holy Spirit doing the work of Jesus? Or Jesus doing the work of the Holy Spirit? Or the Son doing the work of the Father? It's the Father that will initiate. It's the Son that executes. It's the Holy Spirit that sell it. To sell it means it's ratified. No devil, no principality can touch it. Oh, I want to prophesy over somebody today that your blessing that God has issued, Holy Spirit, seal it in the mighty name of Jesus. Seal it in the mighty name of Jesus. When you seal, the enemy cannot tamper with it. It is done to you. Unless you don't want it. Amen. Let me teach. I want to teach today. Is that okay? Almost finished. John 3, 5 and 6. Please write it down. Jesus answered. You know it. He said, Jesus answered, most assuredly I said to you, unless one is born of the what? The water and the spirit. The water. Are we there? John 3, 5 and 6. Not there yet. John 5. John 3, 5 and 6. Jesus answered, said, Most surely I said to you, unless one is born, born of the what? Water and of the Spirit. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. That is the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the one that convicts. Holy Spirit is the one that born us again. Make us be born again. He said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. Oh, his spirit. Let's talk a little bit one the time. The char- character as a person. Holy Spirit is a person. Holy Spirit is not a thing. Hello? Hi? Holy Spirit is a one, is a person and not a thing or a force. It's a person. The person of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is not an impersonal power or influence like electricity or something you can turn on and turn off. No, you can't turn him on and turn him off. Like switch two, 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 and do that. Holy Spirit has his own will. He comes when he wants to come. He goes when he wants to go. You can play game with the Holy Ghost. It's not a switch that you turn on and turn down like electricity. He's a person. He has his own will. 
can't push him around. Thou shalt not push him around. Even he won't allow it. You say, Pastor, the same way you have your will, you have your will, I have my will, Holy Spirit have his own. I hear me. Holy Spirit is not an impersonal power or influence like electricity or some other form of power which switch on and off. Amen. So show that you see scriptures. He has his own personal pronouns. We'll do this and maybe next week. Personal pronouns. Can you read the Bible? And I say personal pronouns, what do I mean? Huh? He. To him. Nothing. Or force. Or evil spirit. Or demon. They refer to him. He. When he has come. Who? Personal pronoun. It's a person. Amen? He has his own personal pronouns. Not only that, he possesses the basic characteristic of personality, of intelligence, sensitivity, and will. Intelligence, sensitivity, and will. He expressed his own personality include ability to feel. Ability to feel. He had the intellect, sensitivity, he has will. He teach. Amen. He teach. Holy Spirit is a teacher. Jesus said, He will teach you all things. He, nothing. He will teach you what? All things. We need to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Well, this morning I woke up by prayer. I pray. I talk to him personally. I'm serious. I'm supposed to be traveling somewhere, and I ask Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, should I go here or not? And he replied me right away. I said, Thank you, Father. Should I do this or not? I'm talking to a person. He's sensitive. Very intelligent. He knows everything. He knows what's going to happen tomorrow. So I will ask him, Holy Spirit, I want to do this tomorrow. Should I continue? Sometimes he will tell me no. Sometimes he will say yes. I'm serious. So it's a person. Amen. God. So if you talk to him, don't talk to him as if you're talking to your body. Don't agree. I'm serious. It happened. I come on the stage, he gave me something. He revealed some things. Last Friday, that's what uh, uh, Lady Korean was saying. I saw somebody is getting a new job that they didn't plan for. I didn't know it on my own mind. It's the Holy Spirit. Somebody had to have testimony, tell me to pray. You know, he wants this job. Holy Spirit, don't pray. I know if, if he said that, he probably said, the devil said, don't pray. Holy Spirit, don't pray for the person. He said, I should tell the person to go make a vow with God that they will always pay their time. I talked to them well, uh, today. I thought they would do it the same night. The person didn't do it. Nobody called them. They didn't call them. He did it the next day. I said, why did you take so long? The next day, almost 24 hours, he didn't get any call until he did it. And when he did it, he was just saying, man, it was so funny. After I did that, what you tell me to do? An hour, an hour later, I get a call from these people that have been coming in weeks. One hour. If he didn't do it, he won't tell you up to today. 
Because the Holy Spirit knows what to do. The moment he's done, he's going to that person called now. Sometimes he will put it into them as a thought. Some of you, God is leading you, don't even know. He thinks it's you, no, it ain't you. <laughs> I'll talk to you some more. You think it's you. It's not you. Like Peter, Jesus said to the disciple, whom do you say I am? I know they, they didn't even know who he was. <laughs> they didn't know who he was. So Peter just got up. He said, you are Christ, son of the living God. Jesus humbled him. Another boy said, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you. It's my father in heaven that I've revealed to you. It happened to us sometimes. The Holy Spirit give us something in our mind. Huh? The Holy Spirit spoke to me. I'm serious. God spoke to me the first day I met her. Not serious. I told you that before. I wasn't, I wasn't joking. I didn't make it up. The first day. Then she couldn't hear from God. She was fighting it. She couldn't hear from God then. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. I told her she didn't feel the hear the girl. Look at me like, oh, what was this guy talking about? Where's where this guy from? And I, oh, Holy Spirit, I said, don't mind that. That's what that is. First day. It's the Holy Spirit. Am I teaching this? I want you to get a better understanding who the Holy Spirit is. He's our comforter. He's the extension of God on her. He's the administrator of the glory of God. It's what Jesus was to the disciple. Holy Spirit is that to us today. Holy Spirit is the healer. And, and, and I'll finish. I'll finish. I'll finish. We'll continue. Because... Hopefully, I might continue. I know I started another series. I might continue this and begin to talk about the purpose of the Holy Spirit, the assignment of the Holy Spirit. Why the Holy Spirit is here for us. Amen. A lot of us don't use the Holy Spirit. We don't consult the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Spirit is God. It's okay if you don't say amen. The angels are shouting in heaven. Holy Spirit is a teacher. Holy Spirit exercise is real. Holy Spirit forbid. Holy Spirit works miracle. And I will stop there. He works miracle. Holy Spirit heal. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes I don't need to lay hands on you. I just speak it and the Holy Spirit will do it. Hallelujah. I don't need to do that. Even deliverance. I speak it in the name of Jesus. And things will begin to happen. Don't speak it up. I have that kind of relationship with the Holy Spirit because I know it's the extension or continuation of God on earth. He's the administrator of the glory of God. He is a miracle working God. Holy Spirit is the healer. Hallelujah. Even if you are sick now, I will speak it in the name of Jesus and you will be healed. You will be delivered. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The other day, I met with somebody. We were just talking. You need a special prayer. You need deliverance. I didn't lay hands. I didn't even pray. Oh, the Spirit touched that person when he got home. I'm serious. He's the Holy Spirit. He's everywhere. Can we explain the manifestation of the Holy Spirit tonight? Can we have the Holy Spirit to begin to touch us and to heal us? Hallelujah. But the only thing we have to do, we have to ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And the Father will do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's how they work together. Hallelujah. I remember I was in Uganda. I was praying for people. A lady came to me need major deliverance. Major. She came and she came, he said, I need help. This has been going. I can't sleep. This happening. There's a visitation. And this. She gave me so much thing, I don't even know where to start. Oh, that's another one. That's another one. I can, tell, I can go on and go on and go on. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. 
If you have that relationship, you know who the Holy Spirit is. He will use it like that. Nobody say. He will use it the same. But how can you work with the Holy Spirit when you don't know who the Holy Spirit is really is? It's a person. It's God. It's the continuation of God on earth. It's the administrator of the glory of God. It's our counselor. Amen. Sometimes we make decisions on ourselves when we have the Holy Spirit there to help us. Even if you are not a prophet, it will give you a dream. And even if you don't dream, it will send somebody to you. The Holy Spirit. The lady came in Uganda. She was going on, she was going, she was going. I don't know how to pray. It was too much. I just prayed, say, Father, help her. You know what the Holy Spirit told me? It's one of those deliverance. She had to pray three days fasting, no food, and pray. Taba, taba. I said, No, just pass at that three times. God is faithfulness over time. Jabez was to pray. He said, Just say, Pass at that three times. You know? And the husband was right beside her. I said, This is what the Holy Spirit said. Can I tap on your wife's back? He said, Man of God, she's been going through so much. Sometimes I don't see. To be quiet. Where in the world I would know what to do? I will touch her. Where? She lists all that she was going to say. I will touch her. I consult the spirit of honesty. Pow, pow. I make sure it's not to happen because the old man right there. I'm still pow, pow, pow. Guess what? Ah. Boom! She fell under the anointing. She got up. It was a different person. Let me give you another one. The work of the Holy Spirit. Oh my God, I can give you. This is my ministry. Just started the ministry. We just started. In a house, one of our properties in Bowie. A lady came. Cancer. Her head was bald. I'm serious. I didn't know. I didn't know. Holy Spirit said, go lay hands on her. I didn't even pray because I don't know what she's going through. God is my witness. I lay hands. Boom! She fell under the anointing from the beginning of worship to the end of the service. After service, Pastor Masha will tell you, she won't go. She's still slain in the spirit. We got to go home. I'm serious. We got to go home. I have to kneel down and ask the Holy Spirit, please wake her up. We got to go home. And that's what I saw. Let's say, Holy Spirit, release her. It's a person. Amen. It's a person. I talk to the Holy Spirit. When you know the person of the Holy Spirit, you can talk to him like that. With respect, without grieving the Spirit. Talk to him. That's our thoughtness. I went to the Holy Spirit. She won't go. She don't. Not that she won't go. She was slain. From the beginning of service, she was slain. I have to go and see what the Holy Spirit is doing. I was hungry. It was a long service too. Say, so Holy Spirit, be honest if I lied to you. Pastor Masha was there. Everybody was gone. Some then they don't know. Guess what? Oh. Holy Spirit, what we are going through when you have that relationship with the Holy Spirit, He's our comforter. He's there with us, He's a person. You can talk to Him. Hallelujah. It's not a thing or a force or a demon. Guess what? It's a wonderful grace of God. You see, in the beginning of the ministry, guess what happened? When she got up, Holy Spirit released her. Have the Holy Spirit release her in the name of Jesus. I just did that. We got to walk together. If you don't put Jesus' name, nothing is going to happen. Or if you don't have relationship. Hello?
first you went to the bathroom and you came, you skimmed a little. You went to the bathroom, you took off. You did it. God is not interested by your life. I gave you chicken back. You can be I said, what? Remember, I didn't know nothing. It was our first day in that church. Holy Spirit just said, go and walk, lay hand. So I lay hand. Not before I even lay hand, boom, show gone. When she came back the following Sunday, I hear us right here. Cancer was gone. Cancer what? Remember, I didn't pray. Holy Spirit searches all things. <laughs> all of that is the work of the Holy Spirit. When I go to India, I see blind, real blind. Real blind man. Eyes open. It's the Holy Spirit. He gives us direction. He gives us instruction. And miracle happen. Can we stand on our feet? And miracle happen. Come on, let's give it to him. Let's give it to God. 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 I'm going to do this quick. I'm going to do this quick. Anyone trusting God for healing, come. Let me just touch you quick. And the Holy Spirit, healing, come. Come. I'm going to touch you quick. Pray. As led by the Spirit, he's touching God for healing. For healing. For healing. For healing. Lift your hands to heaven. Come on, can we pray for them in the name of Jesus? For healing. For healing. Father, we thank you. We bless you. I just thought about the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit. We know that the Holy Spirit is here. The extension or the continuation of God on earth. Jesus came and paid the price. And he said, by his stripes we were here. Lord, you know what they're going through. You know where they need healing. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I ask Lord to touch them now. Touch them. I pray in the name of Jesus. Because Jesus paid the price. By his stripe, we are healed. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, touch them. Holy Spirit, touch them. Holy Spirit, touch them. Holy Spirit, heal them. Holy Spirit, heal her. Heal him. Heal them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, thank you. I thank you that you are healing. I see the neck, 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 neck. Be healed. Who is that? The Lord is touching your neck. The Lord is touching your neck. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Back pain, be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Father, we bless you. Spine, who have spine? Spine, be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We know that the Holy Spirit is here. Holy Spirit, that I welcome in this place. is here. It's here. It's here. It's touching you. It's here, it's here, it's here. It's touching you, it's touching you. It's touching you, it's touching you. Holy Spirit, touch them. Holy Spirit, touch them and heal them. Now, 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 now. Receive the power of God. Receive just the behind it. Receive the power of God. Be healed now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit. Be healed, be healed, be healed. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit is here. 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 Lay your hand on your tummy. Lay your lay your hand there. What's wrong?
speaking in the spirit, you want to begin to pray in tongues, speak in tongues, or if you don't have a prayer language, come quick, come quick, come quick. I remember in the church, in Ephesus, Apostle Paul went to Ephesus and he went to them, he saw some people, he asked them, have you heard about the Holy Spirit? Who remember that scripture? That's why he asked them, have you heard about the Holy Spirit? They said, no, we haven't heard anything about the Holy Spirit. You know what he did? Remember that scripture? He lay hands on them and he prayed. He received the Holy Spirit. He spoke in tongues. And the prophesied. And the prophesied. I'm going to lay hands on you. I'm going to believe that the Holy Spirit will give you new tongues, prayer tongues. Not only that, they are nine gifts of the Spirit. How many? Nine. All I need to Basiketelia Basaya. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' Speaking in tongues is the evidence. Amen? But it's more than speaking in tongues. They are gifts. Gift of prophecy. I mean, they have the gift of prophecy. Gift of prophecy. Amen? I mean, you see vision. I pray in the name of Jesus, even after today, I lay hands on you. Holy Spirit will give you the gift that he has ordained for you to have. Vision. Speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues, healing, miracle, amen. So when your friends are sick, what you do? Pray for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, lift up your hands to heaven. So begin to thank God, begin to bless God, begin to bless God, begin to thank God, begin to bless God. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Father, we exalt your holy name. Father, we magnify your name in the name of Jesus. Yes, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. I'm going to tell you what to do next. Just begin to thank him first. Begin to thank him first. We want new tongue, Father. I pray in the name of Jesus. You will baptize them with the Holy Ghost. Baptize them with the Holy Ghost and power. In the name of Jesus, give them new tongue. Prayer, prayer language. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Okay, what are we going to do next? How many, how many of you pray in the spirit already? Okay. So you want prayer tongue? Okay. Begin to pray in the spirit. I will come. I will lay hands quick. Okay. If you don't speak in the spirit, you don't speak in the spirit. If you don't speak in the spirit, this is what I want you to do. Say, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen to me. Holy Spirit is the one that gives you. Talk about that more, hopefully another time. He gives this gift. He gives the healing. He gives the, you know, miracle. He gives prophetic. He gives interpretation. If you don't pray in the spirit, come forward. If you don't pray in the spirit, you want to be baptized today, come here. Okay, you say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You one new tongue or prayer language, begin to pray in your language that you have now, you will see as I begin to pray for you, God will switch it. God will give you another higher level. Okay? You say, Okay, in Jesus' name, okay, stop. We, we're going to do it again for the people in front that want to be baptized. You'll be saying, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, one thing with tongue, it has to be diverse. Can we say diverse? What does that mean? Different tongues. 
Don't just say something about, 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 about. What's that? That's not the Holy Spirit. Amen? So I will tell you to do, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let, let's do them first, then we'll do, we'll be doing, hallelujah, hallelujah. When you're doing fast, it will want to change. Don't stop it. Don't try to control it and stop it. You might be speaking and you don't understand it. In everything we do in Christianity is by faith. Amen? It's by faith. So if you're doing hallelujah, hallelujah, blah, 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 don't stop it. Continue. Amen? Okay, let's do this quick. Say hallelujah, loud, loud, loud. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Continue, don't stop it. If you want to switch, you will switch. If you switch it, don't stop it. Don't stop, you stop it. Don't stop. Holy Spirit giving you, possessing your vocal cord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Fast, 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 fast. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, let it come out, let it come out, let it come out, loud, 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 loud. Don't speak it, don't speak it. That's it, you got it. Continue, continue. Don't stop it. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Fast, 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 fast. Fast, 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 fast. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Receive it, receive it. Don't, don't stop. Don't pause, don't pause. Continue, continue, continue. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Aha, she got it, she got it, she got it, she got it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Ah, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. Heard your cry, the Lord has heard your cry, uh -huh. and He's here to deliver you. He's here to deliver you. Yeah, it will change some things. 
It will change something. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, pray, pray. Pray, 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 pray. pray. Why do you stop? Lay, lay your hand on the stomach. It's fire. It's fire of the Holy Ghost. Lay your hand. Lay your hand. In the name of Jesus. Lay your hand. In the name of... No, you lay your hand, Pastor Marshall. In the name of Jesus. 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 By the power of the Holy Spirit, receive it. Speak it. She got it. She got it. She got it. Speak it. Speak it. Speak it. You might not understand, but just speak it. Speak it. Take your mind off of it. Take your mind off of it. Take your mind off of it. In Jesus' name. Okay. I need to stop this. I need to stop this. This one, she was prophesying. She was prophesying into her own situation. Yeah, I heard it. Do the speak. Yeah, it's been so long. Amen. Take it in Jesus' name. Take it. Amen. Those that want to new talk, they are all speaking. It's the Holy Spirit. Those that want new prayer talk. I mean, I have prayer talk here. You want a new one? I want God to switch it to take it to another level. But you have, you have to be prayer warrior. If you're a prayer warrior, you have prayer tongue. Come. You want a new one? Ah. Come here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's the name? Mitchell? Can, you, can someone help him? Help him out? Don't worry, it's Holy Ghost weekend. Holy Ghost weekend. The Pentecost. Did, did you speak in the spirit before? God wants to give you more than that. You are blessed. Have something. Yeah, no, no. I, when I see that, um, God really want to raise him up in the area of intercession, and he, God wants to multiply his prayer, his languages by giving more, more than one tongue. Yes, I want to pray for everybody. That prayer language. If you have one now, is it in warfare? How many of you do warfare? Let me teach that very soon. You change different level depending on what you are dealing with in the spirit realm. Amen? So if you want prayer language, begin to pray the one that you have now. Begin to pray the one that you have now, then I'm going to come. Begin to pray the one that you have now. Prayer language. Prayer language. Prayer language.
Holy Spirit, I ask you to give a new tongue, a new prayer tongue as a warrior. Receive it. Aha. 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 Receive it. Receive it. A new tongue. A new tongue. Come, follow me. Follow me. A new tongue. A new tongue. Prayer tongue. Prayer tongue. Prayer tongue. You will see, listen to yourself. It's about to change. Father, switch it. 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 Fresh. 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 Raise a standard. Raise a standard. Fresh. 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 New tongue. New tongue. New tongue. New tongue. Aha. Aha. New tongue. New tongue. Prayer language. Fresh. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power. Switch it. Ah, Father. Come on. Put your wife. Switch it. Holy Spirit. Give a new tongue. A fresh tongue. Prayer. Prayer. Prayer language. Prayer language. Holy Spirit. New level. New level of warrior. New level. New level. New level, 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 new level. Speak, 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 speak. Holy Spirit, fresh, Holy Spirit, fresh, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, fresh tongue, prayer tongue, prayer tongue, fire, tongue by fire, tongue by fire, tongue by fire. Tongue by fire. Tongue by fire. Next level. New level. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Switch. Switch in the name of Jesus. Switch it. Switch it. I switch it. New level. New level. Intercession by fire. Intercession by fire. Uh 
Uh-huh. 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 Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Give a new tongue. Give a prayer language. New prayer language. Papa kata pa ha. Papa kata la pa. Pe. That's a prayer language. It's praying. It's praying. Oh my God. Huh? Father, change his prayer language, take it to another level. I am level. I am level of a warrior. Give him warrior, warrior's tongue, warrior's tongue, warrior's tongue, warrior's tongue, warrior's tongue, warrior's tongue, warrior's tongue. Look at that, This guy, he has a prophetic. He's prophesying. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, come. He, he has, I tend to be praying, but actually he's prophesying. He, he has a tongue. Come here. He, he has his tongue. Sometimes when you pray, speak in tongue, you either praying, speaking to God, or God speaking to you, to the church. But for him, God is speaking to him. For the church. He has. Okay. Okay. All right. Give it. Begin to speak. Don't put your mind there. Don't put your mind there. Loud. Three people will prophesy today. You to come. Need any help? Um, um, Felicia, kneel down to come. Maya, you stay beside Felicia. There are three people I see. I know we got to go 15 after 10. Okay, no, begin to speak. You, you two, to put your head up. Put your head up. Begin to pray the spirit. <laughs> Prophetic word. Be a lot. Be In the name of Jesus Christ. Prophetic word. Be a lot. Prophetic word. Be a lot. You need to come. Prophetic word. You to stay. You stay. You have to come at it. You have to covet it. Do we have time? We have to covet it. Covet the anointed. Covet the prophetic. And anyone that wants prophetic, you better kneel down and begin to pray. Covet it. 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 Covet. Covet it. Covet. I unlock. Unlock prophetic well. 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 Unlock. Unlock prophetic well. Unlock it. Unlock it. Unlock it. Unlock it. I unlock it. The well, prophetic well, begin to flow. Prophetic well, begin to flow. Prophetic well, begin to flow. Unlock! Unlock! In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I unlock it. In the name of Jesus. 
by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. I unlock it. Let it begin to flow. 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 In Jesus' name, Amen. All good things must continue. The time is eighteen out of ten. If no, we will continue. God is unlocking it. I see it. I see it. He's unlocking the flow of prophetic. Actually, it's for you to be able to guide yourself, lead by the Holy Spirit, to guide you, to direct you, to instruct you. In Jesus' name. You, t- you prophesy today. You prophesy in your situation. And the Lord will do it. The Lord will do it. Continue to trust him. flow. He said, from your heart shall flow rivers of living water. We're going to stop. Who has vision? Yeah, what's that? Hallelujah! The well is open. You know what is there? Jesus said, John 7, from your heart, and that version said, from your belly, shall what? Rivers. If I have time, we will continue. God will do something, you guys. Rivers. And I see it was blocked before. And the Lord said, unlock it. <laughs> Prophetic flow. There's a one. Say that again. There was a one. A path. But it's a mountain. Mm-hmm. The mountain one. In prophetic, one of the obstacles is fear. People are afraid they're going to miss it. Fear can become a a mountain. Obstacles. Today, the Lord has moved it. She was prophesying. She was prophesying into her own situation. And he will not stop. We, we got to go. I, I have prayer session after this. We got to let you guys go. What's your name? Come. The Holy Spirit touched her too today. Oh, you saw that? The Spirit touched her. The Spirit of God touched you. Have you touched you like this before? Eh? He touched you. I saw it. In Jesus' name. I saw that. It will be permanent. In Jesus' name, I saw that. Amen. We will continue next Friday. I will continue to teach on the Holy Spirit. Amen. There's more we need to teach. Amen. Let's take offering and go home. But it's a lady, a lady, a lady, a lady, a papa. Hey. Lady, a papa, a saga. Eh? Yeah, put your resume there. Amen. We're going to take offering and let you go home. Amen. We will continue.
Jimmy. We're going to take offering. Oh, no. Stay there. Don't, don't, don't. Stay with us. Holy Spirit is working. Yaka taka. Holy Spirit. So powerful. Holy Spirit. Let's do tithe and offering. Now begin to pray more in the spirit. It will unlock more. Amen. Don't allow fear to stop you. Amen. Way to give. Let's give. <sighs> Just let her go. Take her to sit. She can go sit down. Take her, take her, take her. We'll continue this more. Go on to do our time. Maybe next week we won't do testimony. I come quick so we can have enough time to do some activation. That's what we call activation. Amen. It's the day of Pentecost. We have to pray in the spirit and prophesy. Can we get, bring the basket? Let us give. Give our tithe, our offering. If you need envelope, our usher will give you one. You know. Come. If you need envelope, right here. Or you can give online through Cash App. Everlasting Life. Next week, I will just come go to teaching. Then we can uh, do a lot of activation. To, be, to speak to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Speak to God. Amen. Anybody in the envelope? If not, you can give online. If a last life you see. If a last life you see. Father, we bless you. Lord, we thank you for what you've done today. Thank you for what you will do Sunday. Visit us on Sunday. Is even as we go today, go before us. Let your angels go before us. And let your glory encamp around us. In the mighty name of Jesus, there will be no accident. I cancel it in Jesus' name. There will be no bad incident. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let the glory, the Holy Spirit encamp around us. Nobody will fall asleep. We will drive home peacefully. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. We give you praise. We give you glory. Keep everyone. Protect everyone. In Jesus' name. Can I hear amen?